Hyatt's Orator and Written Word. Both very, very, very important. When a poem is performed, the audience gets to hear it the way the poet intended the audience to feel it and hear it. So the poem is presented the way the poet feels it. So you get the direct impact of it coming over the way you might not have got when you read it. And it's really important to, to have that, but there's a lot to be said for print, too, because orally, we can only reach those in our realm. With print, we can reach all across the world, on the internet, magazines, books. Print has no boundaries. Uh, we have boundaries as long as we don't travel. Uh, and unless we're famous, we you don't have money to travel to get our, <laughs> our word heard. But I think um, orature and printed word, orature and print, there, it's a marriage of words that belongs together, both, and both streams of consciousness should be presented in both ways, and uh, I love both of them. I love reading, and I love um, presenting, I love watching spoken word poets, I love listening to poets that read their poetry, so to me, it all has a place. I actually like them. I, uh, I believe it was the Bedrock Slam team that had a, a CD that I purchased. Excellent. Just excellent. You can put it on the CD and you just sit there and listen. And I saw, I watched them perform, and then of course the audio CD. It brings back the visual to me from watching them perform. So it's kind of like a, instead of a rock concert, a poet concert, <laughs> you can you can relive it. I, I actually love spoken word CDs. I like everything that's been said so far. <laughs> <laughs> Some very interesting things have been brought up. Wade, what you were saying before um, about how some poems, you know, even within the same book, some poems work so, you know, so well read out loud, and other poems which work really well on the page are just duds, you know, when you read them out loud. And sometimes you don't know that until you're at a reading, and you think, you know, I'm so proud of this, this poem that's been published and has won awards and whatever, and then, you know, as you read it out loud, you can just see that it's, it's turning to sawdust in your mouth. You know, it's just not meant to be read aloud. Um, one thing I'll throw out there, and I don't know if um, you will perhaps disagree with me, but I almost think of spoken word poetry and poetry on the page as being two different art forms that draw two different personality types. Um, you know, when I go and listen to a spoken word poet, I'm struck by the extroversion, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, of that person. You know, this is somebody who clearly... Um, you know, really enjoys being out there in front of people and is feeding off the energy from the audience. Um, I've also been to readings from poets who are desperately uncomfortable in front of an audience. Their work is brilliant on the page, but they're introverts, and it's all they can do to get up with their you know, palm shaking in their hand to stand at the microphone. And it can be a painful experience because you know, I mean, their work is just so amazing, but they're not, I mean, the reason they became writers, the reason they became poets was because they did want, they did feel comfortable around people. You know, the way that they communicate is through the page. So, and I think there's room for that, but I sometimes feel uncomfortable that audiences expect to be entertained. And so when they are at a reading by a page poet, um, their expectations are not being met on a performance level quality of the work can be so much higher than that of a spoken word poet. I'm just thinking of, um, I heard Don Domansky years ago at the Writers' Festival, and, you know, he was clearly very uncomfortable getting up and reading. He didn't even say hello to the audience, I think. He just launched into his poem and just read. And he ended up getting the, the biggest ovation of the evening because the power of his words alone, and it wasn't the way he conveyed them, but the words themselves were ultimately what swept people away. Um, so that was kind of affirming for me, even though 
because I, I don't always see that sort of response to, to poetry that, is, that primarily lives on the page. I agree with everything. <laughs> I agree. Um, I agree that it takes almost like a split personality um, uh, to write and then to read. And um, and the reason why I started to recite my poems was because I had seen a lot of writers that presented poorly, and um, and it was it it, it kind of um, uh, makes it's uncomfortable for the listeners and it's uncomfortable for the writer and it's just like why do you, why are we doing this to ourselves so um, and, and so I learned what not to do by what I didn't like to do too so um, I started to um, recite my words but I wanted to talk about uh, what is poetry holy cow like what is poetry it's a big thing um, and I like to think back to um, an interview I did with John Trudell John Trudell I have to explain is um uh, activist man, and uh, he was back. He, he he came up in the times of um, the occupation of Alcatraz uh, Island in San Francisco, and uh, he was uh, there on the ground level of the American Indian movement. So this is a very uh, a very uh, important man to our history and activism as uh, indigenous people. And then uh, he had horrible tragedy struck him. Uh, his family was um, murdered. Basically, they were all uh, set aflame in the house, and then uh, to survive, he became a poet. And and how he talks about poetry is, it's, you know, it's, it's our last, as artists, it's our last political voice. Uh, but beyond that, you know, we can talk about politics and love and whatever all else is popular in the poetry realm, um, but we're talking about energy. So in terms of arts, uh, create something that's, that has energy. That's all I can say. And that's what I endeavor to do as an artist, as a writer. Um, because, man, you've got to feed the people. I think it's part of our responsibility uh, as writers and artists to feed the people. Give them something to walk away with and make it good, right? Cook it up good. So um, that's what I always endeavor to do. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with the politics within my work, that's, that's another thing entirely. But at least, you know, at least it sparks something. And I think that's... That's what poetry is, and, or what it can be. Um, it's, and that's just one of the things that poetry is and can be. <laughs> and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to make a definitive statement about that. Um, but, uh, and, 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 and like anything else, if it's not fun, why bother? <laughs>